It is my great pleasure to introduce Franziska Weidler, a visual anthropologist, ethnographic media maker and digital learning designer from Germany. She holds a PhD in visual anthropology from the University of Göttingen. I think this is the fourth time that we meet face to face uh, in the real world. Uh, it was in 2015 when we first met. Uh, I think we were, remember, we were sitting in a street cafe in Barcelona and Francisca interviewed me for her PhD. Uh, I don't remember if I really knew what a PhD was. I certainly had no idea what it meant. Um, the thing that struck most with me was that yet again there was someone interviewing me who was not interested in the crazy new and world-changing idea that I had at that uh, very moment and that I was about to pitch to um, television producers uh, at Docs Barcelona from where my world-changing idea went exactly nowhere. Francisca's PhD, on the other hand, was published in 2020 with its beautiful title pointing towards ecology of clouds and trees. The subtitle uh, is more functional, uh, Software Mediated Visions in Documentary and Ethnographic Filmmaking Practice. During her PhD, Francisca uh, went to Australia, not only to be with the love of her life, her now husband, but also to work with Adrian Miles, the scholar that we met uh, when I introduced Alisa. Through Adrian in Melbourne, Judith, that we also met in the introduction before, uh, met Daniel Fetzner, who came late for the conference uh, from Germany, uh, who I also have to, uh, the pleasure to introduce for this session. This is a bit of a weird session. It started to be a session for Fran of Francisca, and then like uh, Daniel came in and Judith came in and now I have to introduce all of them and it makes me crazy. This connection between Francisca, Daniel and Judith is important because they all collaborate on the Terrains in Transition project about which Francisca, Daniel and I quite, and Judith Essen uh, will share more once I'm finished with my introduction. I first met Daniel in Bayreuth at a conference that was organized by Anna Wiel, who is another, how to say, spider in the web of this uh, uh, of our uh, uh, research project, and unfortunately cannot be here today. And I must confess uh, that Daniel seemed a little bit strange to me when we first met, uh, and that uh, maybe because I did not really understand what uh, his talk. Uh, at that time and um, I understood that he was a bit dismissive about uh, cybernetics of which I was a great fan of and uh, my ignorance at that time is astonishing as uh, it takes one look at his uh, extensive and fascinating work uh, that should have shown me immediately that I, I must have understood misunderstood something. Daniel Fetzner is a magician uh, when it comes to making multimodal, multi-connected works that weave together installations, performances and theory. Uh, and I forgot technology. Uh, and I have mentioned a couple of times already, Judith Aston here is uh, the founding director of iDocs, the leading center in Europe for research into evolving documentary practices. She's Senate senior fellow of higher education of the Higher Education Academy, Fellow of the Royal Arts Society, and she is the chair of the UK's Royal Anthropological Film Committee, where she co-organized the conference last week. Judith holds a BA and an MA degree in Geography from the University of Cambridge, a PhD, uh, in, a PhD degree in Anthropology, Film and Interaction Design from the Royal College of Art. Judith is an associate professor at the University West of England, where I suppose her main headache currently is to get me through a PhD. Francisca Weidle is currently, uh, currently works as a learning designer at the Brandenburg University of Technology, Cottbus Senftenberg. And Daniel Fetzner holds a professorship at Offenburg University, where he focuses on artistic research. Judith, Francisca, Daniel, the stage is yours. You have 30 minutes.
Well, thank you very much for this introduction and for the invitation as well. It's a great pleasure to meet all of you and discuss these topics here with you. And uh, yes, as Florian already said, um, this um, talk uh, sort of slightly changed um, its structure. So now we're going to present the three of us and we basically want to talk about um, the Terrains and Transition project uh, in which we want to investigate questions around care and future visions in and across two uh, heavily industrialized sites um, in Germany and in the UK. And our aim is basically to use interactive documentary as a research tool in order to initiate a dialogue um, in, with these local communities. And uh, I will spend the next sort of 10 to 12 minutes talking a little bit more about the theoretical underpinnings um, and then uh, and why we think that iDocs are particularly suitable as a, as a research tool for this type of investigation. And then afterwards I will hand over to Judith and Daniel who will talk a little bit more about the Tetra project. They will show a first prototype and talk about the two sites that we're going to look at. So um, let me start by talking about uh, computational correspondence, which is um, a concept that I came up with uh, through my work with Korsakov and um, my PhD. So basically in my PhD, I was really interested in the tools um, that are used for making iDocs and not just the tools themselves, but more the relationship between the tools and the makers and which modes of making arise from this relationship. So I was particularly interested in Korsakov because uh, it appeared that its design seemed to lend itself um, to a radically different approach to making documentaries because it follows the logic of the computer a bit more rigorously. Um, it sort of uses the principle of random access retrieval of information um, to create um, more loose and multilinear structures rather than creating a fixed linear structure as we know it from filmmaking. So in Korsakov, keywords are used and um, these keywords sort of drive the connections so that one clip can have many links to many other clips which are generated um, on the fly in real time. And if we apply this procedural logic to editing, if you want to think of it like that, to interactive documentary, it allows us to discover and sustain the multitude of relations between the video clips and between us and the clips. Um, however, this procedural logic only comes to bear when we, to some extent, work against the grain of filmmaking. So analog filmmaking required a mode of making that is closer perhaps to the constructive principle of composing, as, Adri uh, as um, Astrid Schwarz would call it, which um, entails a destructive assembly process. So because you have to literally cut film strips and reassemble them until you get the final edit. With editing software, you can build sequences virtually and you can recut and recombine the shots as often as you like. So this builds more on the principle of this random access retrieval of uh, digital material, um, which therefore invites a different mode of making, which is um, perhaps closer to a combining or a combinatory principle, which is a strategy to give more importance to the processual, to the various spatial and temporal couplings and decouplings of the components of the work, to their relationship to their surroundings and also to the relatedness of the observer and the work. And this can be understood as a comp computational correspondence, which um, I came up with this computational correspondence idea um, through different lines of thought. And just to outline the most important two, um, Adrian Miles talked about computational nonfiction which he introduced as an alternative framework of engagement with interactive documentary because he was not so happy with the interactivity, with the focus on interactivity. And he used um, computational to stress the agency of the computer and um, to acknowledge the materi materiality of video and digital media and the actor networks that interactivity entails. And correspondence comes from the anthropologist Tim Ingold, who uses this term to describe a practice that doesn't seek to come up with a match of the world, 
uh, but more um, wants to find um, answers to the things and happenings around us with interventions, questions and responses. So what does this mean for the way we relate to the world with or through interactive documentary? Well, Miles, Adrian Miles' thinking was very much informed by this Laturian actor network um, approach where the world is regarded as a network of human and non-human actors and these actors have agency and they interact with each other. So here we have a clear focus on the individual points of connection. And uh, at least linguistically, this, is, this logic is still a bit trapped in this cause and effect uh, thinking that actually actor network theory seeks to escape. And for Ingold, um, the components of the world, they do not exist prior to any action. So doesn't agency exist prior to any interweaving and becoming together, which is um, beautifully expressed in this quote. Um, and as the things carry on together and answer to one another, they do not so much interact as correspond. Interaction is the dynamic of the assemblage, where things are joined up, but correspondence is a joining with. It is not additive, but contrapuntal, not and, 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 but with, with, with. So according to Ingold, life is lived not within the perimeter of a network, which you can see on the left-hand side, uh, but, along, but along lines that open, even as they get entangled with the lines of others, as you can see on the right, in a meshwork. So a line of becoming is not defined by the points it connects, or the points that compose it, it passes between points and it has no beginning or end. So Ingold proposed this term meshwork um, to characterize the trails along which life is lived rather than individual data points. And these individual lines are shaped by histories, relationships and trajectories that are entangled with those of others when we encounter them. And what has pretty recently uh, sort of um, entered our thinking and which is what we want to explore in the Tetra project as well is this notion of diffraction and of diffractive ethnography. I don't have so much time to talk about diffractive, what diffraction means for ethnography, but I'll just give you like a short introduction to diffraction. So basically um, it refers to the physical behavior of waves hitting an obstacle. Uh, so for example, when you um, when stones fall into the water and these, they create these overlapping patterns on the surface. And according to Karen Barad, the liveliness of the world manifests itself through such diffractive phenomena, which do not allow any clear demarcations or boundaries uh, or dichotom di dichotomies, um, binary categories and so on. So it's um, a bit opposed to a reflective practice which upholds the strong subject-object divide. So we have a subject and an object, and those, they have agency. But in a diffractive practice, um, it's able to embrace notions of um, intervention, interference, and disturbance. And this can be really productive to do that. So agency isn't an individual property of a subject or an object, but it emerges in these phenomena as a distributed quality. And these qualities can be recognized in different forms, for example, in relations and structures, which is what Korsakov is really good at showing. And if we now make a cut through these entanglements of the world with an apparatus, for example, a theory, a paradigm, a tool, then we, do an, we make an agentile cut, to speak with Barat's terms, which means we are, making, we are creating a boundary that isn't there before, but we are producing it, we are producing an object and a subject, and they are momentarily stabilized with specific qualities that we can then observe. So what does this mode of making mean for doing interactive documentary a bit differently? Well, first of all, um, it invites us to adopt a different mode of engagement with the world. So we're asked to make with the world, which is closely linked to the idea of co-creation, not just with humans, with participants or other researchers, but also beyond the human. Uh, for example, tools like Korsakov, but also ChatGPT, as I think Daniel will talk about as well, 
So it's really interesting to think about what and how can we co-create in dialogue with computational systems, what kind of new ideas or perspectives can be generated. Um, secondly, it invites us to become more responsive to diff difference. So becoming skilled in paying attention, witnessing and responding to differences. And these differences emerge through the practice, through our practice, through our intervening in the field and the encounters that um, emerge, that emerge and are not predetermined. And these um, emergent properties can be felt through frictions, disturbances, interferences. And thirdly, um, it asks us to move beyond representation and towards a mode of doing interactivity, uh, interactive documentary that is more anchored in the present and open for speculations about the future, which translates into a relational and future-oriented thinking around matters of care, such as the slow violence that is going on in heavily industrialized landscapes, like we want to look at in the Tetra project, which is where I would like to hand over to you. We're working across two sites, and Daniel's going to talk to us about that. We both started doing field work in the two sites. So Aidan Math is on the estuary in the UK, the Seven Estuary, Hart Time is on the <coughs> Rhine. And we want to bring those two communities together and entangle them using the interactive documentary as a forward-looking process for talking about speculative futures and for kind of shifting the narrative into a greater awareness of the entanglements between humans and more than human and climate change and the shifts we all need to make. So, over to Dan. Yeah, thank you very much for, for the invitation to Luzern. Um, before I get into details about Tetra and our approach, um, I just want to say how I how it is embedded into into my research that I'm doing since several years with uh, with colleagues and with, with an artistic research group in Freiburg, which is called Deglobalize, and uh, this project uh, is documented mainly via Clint. As, as an interactive uh, documentary. And um, within the project, we did little experiments like this in, in India, uh, an old an reenactment of an old hippie experiment of having a bunch of water tubes and which are entangled like the meshwork of Tim Ingold. And you listen and you talk to, to someone and you create out, uh, you create a meaning out of that situation, of this situative setting. Um, uh, within our research, we are interested in strolling around, yeah, like uh, the situationists strolled or Jakob von Uskel strolled. And so the, um, this kind of uh, documentation, which is um, interactive documentation, is um, uh, the try to um, deal with the fringes of our consciousness, like William Chains called that, uh, to reorganize things and to think through, with, and about media, computational media, within, uh, within the, uh, the field itself. Now what you see here is the first prototype uh, done with Kozakov within the last two weeks uh, that we did uh, for our bid. Um, at uh, DFG, and uh, we can talk about that maybe later. Um, coming back to Ingold in a few words, um, I'm really fascinated by this little simple drawing that Ingold delivered to us uh, about the entanglement of story and life. And if we if you have a look on that, uh, it's 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 a knot, yeah, life and story. Is, is, is not it. And now, as all of us know, um, life is limited, not only in Korsakov, yeah, uh, where you can add one, two, three, four, or infinitive lives. On Earth, it is limited. And these are four references of four people that we've been collaborating with uh, within Deglobalize and who passed away within the last three years. 
Um, what can we learn out of these four thinkers and humanists uh, regarding interactive media, interactive documentary? Now, as I said, Ingold says it's a not story in life. So that is a topological dimension, uh, which Michel Serre focuses on. And he's also talking about interferences. Uh, and he talks about bifurcations, bridges, was uh, especially fascinated by Venetian bridges, the wild topologies of the Venetian bridges that he was talking about, and of course the parasite and parasitic phenomena. So interactive documentary, that's what we learned by Serre, always imply noise and disturbances. And uh, as Alisa, you said in your talk, uh, you, you liked the, the, the messiness of the whole thing. And um, so that is a, a parasitic phenomena in, in the sense of, um, of Serre. Um, and Latour uh, brought the, besides of the actor network theory, theory and other things, he, he brought in the question of the terrestrial. That was his last question uh, that we discussed with him in preparation of the Critical Souls exhibition, which is right now touring in India. Um, how to become terrestrial, how to become earthbound in a way. So that is also important for Tetra, yeah? that we look at these post-anthropocenic landscapes and try to compare them. By Jean-Luc Nancy, we learned that interactive documentary is always a structure. The uncoordinated simultaneity of things, beings, thoughts, and affections. And Peter Weibel, who died three weeks ago, uh, of course he, uh, uh, as, as uh, the director of the uh, Center for Arts and Media in Karlsruhe, but also as a curator, as an artist, uh, used interactive documentary or understood interactive documentary as an extended mind between the media, the data and the human. And well, this is kind of a, a map for our Tetra project that we set up in the, in the very beginning, dealing with slow care, slow violence, with a local and a global, and the resonances in between. And now we could switch to, to our prototype and discuss it, um, if you like. So... Smiley. First time that I use Korsakov. Huh? Should have done earlier. So we we did some snooze, small narrative units uh, in in hard time. The sixth and the seventh of January we've been there and did some filming. It's an old um, nuclear power station which was uh, dismantled or which will be dismantled within the next years but they are planning a new one and so there is a big conflict between the German and the, the French side and well I don't want to get into details and too much about how the keywording and so on you, you most of you are familiar with with uh, Tetra and so we did these again cuts um, uh, at uh, we went to the shooting club and here we've got some uh, view on the on the old Fessenheim power station, and also about Avonmouth. Um, uh, takes a second to come back to Avonmouth, and what we also want to use within Tetra uh, for the speculative dimension about how these uh, places, Avonmouth and uh, Hartheim Fessenheim might uh, develop in the future is use. Uh, now there is no Avonmouth coming up by chance because <laughs> we've got one Avonmouth clip. I'm sorry about that, but it should come maybe in a in a second. But yeah, anyway, yeah. Uh, but I, I I show it. Do you want to talk about Avonmouth? 
few words uh, describe the, the place or your intention to bring it in? Well, I mean, as part, as part of the project is the entanglements of us as a team. So in Germany, there's, there's another principal investigator, Julia B, who's a, a media scientist who will be doing the analytical side of the um, project. So in the UK, there's me and Karen Boswell, um, and then in Germany, there's Daniel and Franzi, and then Julia. And, yeah, and Adrian as well, that's right, the filmmaker, working with Daniel. So we, as part of that, we're coming from different starting points. So I'm very much, you know, I'm an ethnographer, I'm really involved with the Royal Anthropological Institute. I've been trained in participant observation and reflexive methods. So my starting point is much more just sketches. So this was me when I first came into Avermouth. I've been very much, just take my mobile phone, and I've been working in the Avermouth Community Centre, which is the site for our, for, for my interventions. Um, working with accesses of care and the starting point is how is care currently practiced in, in Avonmouth which is an area that the people there say we always, we're always seen as the rough end of Bristol, we're always seen as the, the people, nobody wants to go to Avonmouth it's polluted, it's this, it's that and the other and they, they have a very um, ingrained sense of uh, that's just how it is, you know we, we are an industrial zone and we're not used to you know, get, getting any favours and we don't expect to get many resources and so talking of power structures so but within that there's all sorts of ways that the community is practicing care and care of each other so for me that's my starting point so I've just been in with a mobile phone and been very unintrusive in order to kind of build the trust with the people that's the classic ethnography starting point whereas you're starting with the the more sensory, the agential cuts kind of make make because the idea of our project is we're combining that kind of participatory ethnography with sensory ethnography, where we as creative people are making direct interventions. Because in in Avonmouth, there's a statistic that you're 12, 12 times more likely to need in emergency care than in other parts of Bristol, and that says something about the pollution and the ongoing environmental damage and slow violence in the area and that statistic is about to break in that neighbourhood and the community centre is not shying away from it so if we get our funding in about six months time this whole issue of the environment and health and care will be very much topical and so we with our interventions we're looking at how we can work within communities and start to shift the language so, so that we start to shift the way communities construct themselves so they idealistically have more agency around what happens to their futures so that's that's what we're doing whereas so daniel's been working more with adrian on on lake you've gone straight in and made those cuts and hence this with the more than human and the sensory aspect and to just to finish up uh, uh we try to, to use ChatGPT, um, as you're all familiar with, and the ongoing discussions about this paradigm change in artificial intelligence in order to speculate about the future of, of the towns and also to perform the Gentry cuts themselves by confronting or asking ChatGPT, getting into a correspondence with this computational tool uh, about theory, and uh, the real world, the terrestrial conditions of the two sites that we have chosen. And there's some autoethnography in there as well, isn't there? About our motivations and that thing about being terror, you know, where do you land? And we all need to become more terrestrial, but without going back to, we've got a quote here, without going back to an an anachronistic narratives of nationalism. So that's the big thing. How do you become more terrestrial without resorting to nationalism? And that's a big challenge, isn't it? Which is why we want to look at these two sites, but then also bring them into dialogue with each other, mm -hmm. like a trans-local approach. And Franzi, from her PhD, you are and your work in, in education now, using Korsakoff 
as a direct tool to intervene to start conversations with people. So it becomes a speculative, forward-looking tool to work. We have a project called polyphonicdocumentary.com that we're doing with, that's a group of IDOCs practitioners from around the world where we're exploring co-creation and we're exploring these tools amongst ourselves as a community and we're co-creating and we're getting a sense of what, what it feels like to co-create and then we're sort of looking at how the methods we're developing, how we might take them out into the <coughs> outside world beyond academia, how these, these ways of working might be relevant and helpful in, in other contexts. So that, that's the um, polyphonic documentary. There's about 70 people from around the world from the IDOX community involved and at any one time there's about 30 people directly. We all contribute clips, um, three to five clips and the, the current projects on extreme heat, we put them in a big pot and then we remix and share and different smaller groups within that. Vanessa's working on one um, with, with four people and we're just experimenting and sharing those ways of working and trying to create a kind of a joyful creative environment for practice that enables us to work with theories as well. And the online meet it's about, it's as much about process as it is about product. Florian's involved. So may I open up the round for <laughs>